Yo guys, what is happening? My name is God Disciple and welcome to another DCUO video. So, in today's video guys, I am going to be showing you my 2016 Sorcery Healing Loadout and Guide for PvP. Now, the guide is going to follow the normal layout, so stay tuned to find out where to put your power points, your skill points, what gear to get and how to mod. But most importantly, you are going to find out the loadout and rotation that I will use whenever I am smashing some heads in in PvP. So, let's get cracking, and as always, I do hope the video helps you out. So first up guys, I am going to be showing you where to put your power points. So with Sorcery, you have two power trees. You have Destiny and Summoning. So first of all, in the Destiny tree, you want to be getting Condemn, Soul Siphon, Rejuvenate, Invocation of Renewal, and Circle of Destiny. You then want to be heading over to the Summoning tree, and then you want to be getting the Guardian, Soul Well, Boon of Souls, Ritualistic Word, Transmutation, Shard of Life, and then over to the left to summon Watch Your Fury. Now, this should leave you with three power points left over. So you want to be getting Word of Power, and then you want to be getting the two healer buffs, so Miracle Worker and Empathic Healing. So next up guys, we're heading over to your skill points. Now I tell you guys to do this every time. First things first, go in your movement mode and get it because you don't want to be specking all your skill points and forgetting about this bad boy. Uh, whilst you are also here, you can be getting the innates, so like the, um, the ones which will help you with your stun resistance and also the ones which will allow you to recover power back when you do the breakout on the knockdown. So make sure that you get those. Next you want to be heading over to your weapons. Now first things first, put four skill points down each of the weapons so that you can unlock the critical healing magnitude or the critical healing chance. I am a big supporter of getting this guys, so I would always recommend getting this first of all in each weapon tree just so that you can get those crits that you everybody loves. Next, what you want to be doing, guys, is going over to your preferred weapon. So, I am using the one-handed at the moment. And what you want to be doing in as many of these weapon trees as you can is putting at least 21 skill points in so that you can unlock restoration at the bottom. Now, I would recommend to be able to get to these 21 points, you first of all start with getting the restoration. So, the uh, basically the weapons which you can get restoration from. Um, and that will allow you to build up to the 21, but still getting as much resto as you need for being a healer. Next, I would then suggest going for power. The more power you have, the more healing you can give to your guys and yourself. Um, anything after that, I would look to recommend putting it in like the crit attack chances or damages, just so then you're doing a bit of additional damage as well whilst you're healing. Now, since game update 56, I have started using weapon mastery again. And I am loving using this. It's so good to be able to use it again. When you're in healer role, um, if you do your weapon mastery and then put a power at the end of it, the power cost will be reduced. So you're able to get more heals out at less cost of power, but still being as effective as a healer. So yeah, so make sure that you get your crit heals first, then go for restoration, power, and then if you have anything left over, put it in the crit attack chances and uh, make sure you get the restoration at the bottom and then also get the weapon mastery of your preferred weapon. So we now move on to your gear. Now obviously this is a PvP build so you want to be having the top PvP gear that you can get. So make sure that you're heading into the arena queues on the on duty tab and grind that gear as much as you can because at the moment the top tier gear is PvP item level 100. So I'm currently on my USPS villain so I'm having the Vengeful Surgeon gear. Um, now because obviously I'm on the US side I haven't had the chance to be able to farm my mods yet. But when you are modding the gear, um, PvP gear uses uh, prismatic so uh, sockets. So basically this is sockets where there's no sort of buff that you get from putting a certain colour in. So you can basically mod it however you want. 
Now it depends what kind of a healer you want to be when modding this. If you want to just be a full on heal, then I would recommend modding this with restoration and power. So that you're not hitting the, uh, the stat clamp and you've, you're still getting as much resto as possible. But also you're getting the power so you can get more heals out to your team. Now, when I come to modern this, I'm probably going to go more as like a hybrid healer, so I'm going to be doing damage out. So I'm probably going to be modern this as restoration and precision, so that I'm doing a bit more damage, but I'm still getting the heals as well. But again, guys, it's down to personal preference, what, what kind of a healer you would want to be. If you're more of going to be like a sort of fives or fours healer, then I'd recommend restoration and precision. If you want to be more of a ones and twos healer, then I'd go more down the resto precision sort of route. So guys, we now move on to your loadout and what moves you want to be picking. So, first of all, I have Transmutation, then I have Shard of Life, and then Ritualistic Word, Word of Power, Watcher, and Circle of Protection. So, basically you've got Transmutation, which is sort of like a burst heal move. You've then got Shard of Life, which is a sort of mini healing over time kind of move. Uh, you then got Ritualistic Word, which again is sort of a kind of mini healing over time move um, and it also gives power to your Watcher. You've then got Word of Power, which is your Supercharge and this will give power to you and your team. You've then got your Watcher, which is a pet and that will give you some heals and also do some damage. And then you've got Circle of Protection, which will do healing over time in a certain area. So you basically have a power interaction called bad karma with this loadout. Now you, you get bad karma by using Shard of Life. So when you cast that, it will fall onto your enemy's head and inflict bad karma onto them. Now you've got two moves in the loadout which um, sort of tie in with bad karma. You first of all have circle of protection. So this is the, the healing in the area. So basically once you have uh, circle protection and uh, bad karma going then they are going to have some damage over time going, you can get some ticks going off of that. And then you also have transmutation which will tie in with bad karma, basically you'll get additional damage when you've got bad karma going and you do transmutation on top of that. Right, so here we are then guys, finally we are going to be moving on to the rotation. So, first of all, you want to make sure that you've got your Watcher out. Always have your Watcher out because you are going to be getting some decent heals coming from this little bad boy. And he's just going to be there doing some work for you whilst you're going through your rotation. So always have your Watcher out. Next up guys, you want to be starting with Circle of Protection which I like to call the dance floor. So basically, like I said in the, uh, in the moves to select, this is healing over time in this little area here on the nice little dance floor. So this is actually your longest heal over time. So it costs the most power, but it's really, really good to have it going because anyone in this area is gonna be getting healed. So you wanna be casting it on your enemy so that everyone who's fighting around in this area is getting the heals over time whilst you're just doing your stuff in the background. Next up guys, like I said, you have the power interu uh, power interaction sorry, of bad karma. So I would then look to start going with Shard of Life. So that's a move that does damage over time and you get like a short healing over time effect with that as well. So. Like I said, Shard of Life interacts with um, Circle of Protection, Dance Floor. So if you've got the Circle of Protection up and then Shard of Life, you can see now that I'm getting two lots of damage over time. One from Shard of Life and one from Bad Karma with Circle of Protection. What you also want to be doing as well, guys, is you want to be doing Ritualistic Word. So this is the third power in my loadout tray. Now, remember, like I said in the moves to select, Ritualistic Word does heals over time, but it also will give power back to your Watcher. So you can see at the top left at the moment, my Watcher has no power or the tiniest amount. As soon as I pop Ritualistic Word, my team's getting heals over time and my Watcher is getting power back over time. So I always select, uh, suggest sorry, doing that one as of when you can because you're getting the heals from it and you're giving your watcher the power as well so that he can be doing the heals over here as well. 
So always do that one when you can. It's a really, really good move to have in there and it's really, really underrated by healers. So you then have a transmutation, which looks like this. And this is your burst heal move. Now this will also do a bit of damage as well. You can see you get the burst damage. But like I said in the, um, in the powers to select, once you've got bad karma on your target, you'll get additional damage with transmutation. So it's good to have that one there when you need some burst heals and you want a bit of burst damage as well. I tend to use that move probably less out of the hole of the loadout and more go down sort of like the healing over time route with circle protection, shard of life, ritualistic word going as when you can. And then when the team is not keep being able to uh, be kept up enough by those heals over time, that's when you have transmutation there to do a burst heal for you. Now obviously word of power is the same with every loadout, it gives you power back over time so you can see at the moment, oh not now, let's just spam some power, so you can see I've got no power at the moment, word of power is going to be giving me power over time if I'm struggling or the group is struggling. So it's really really nice and simple guys but I love sorcery healing, it's so nice just to have like the dance floor there, just the heals over time going in the area where everyone's going to be fighting and then keeping everyone going with Shard of Life and Ritualistic Word and then when everyone's struggling, Transmutation, Happy Days. You can see at the back doing your Weapon Mastery, getting the reduced power uh, costs of the moves and everyone's nice and healed. You'll tend to find more in like sort of fours and fives that Sorcery Healing gets the most healing out. And that is because the amount of heals over time and how big they are is just awesome. So yeah, I love sorcery as a healing power. I'd probably say it's my favourite healing power. Obviously I've been celestial. Um, the heals are slightly lacking but you make up for that with the damage. And with electric, I see sort of electric as more of like a, a secondary sort of healing uh, power. So sorcery I'd always recommend is the main healing power get some pretty nice damage with it as well so yeah guys that is my healing loadout and guide for sorcery um, if you do have any questions let me know in the comments section below or even if you've got some suggestions let me know um, I know some people like to swap out transmutation for rejuvenate um, like I said I'm more of like a sort of hybrid healer so I like the damage that you get with transmutation and the burst heals that you'll get with it as well. But each to their own, there's more than one healer power, or there's more than six healer power, sorry. So there is gonna be some sort of variations, but this is the one that's never let me down. So yeah, like I said before guys, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take good care, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.